Hello, this is the next video in a playlist that I'm calling Introduction to Mathematical Statistics. And we're in Chapter 4 part of this playlist that I'm calling Joint Distributions. And today we're going to talk about order statistics. So first, let's sort and order our sample data. So assume we have a sample of size N from this population, that's PDFF. And, and now let's sort it. So if this is a, a random sample, we don't know which one's the smallest, which one's the second smallest, which one's the largest, etc. So we can sort them. And then we essentially sprinkle these down in order. So whatever the ith observation was, that ends up being the smallest. And our first observation is maybe the fifth or sixth smallest. You know, the nth and the jth might be the largest. So this is our sorted data. Well, that, these are our order statistics. We take our sample and order them. Now this is the first smallest, the second smallest, the third smallest, all the way to the nth smallest or the largest. Now to denote that we're talking about order statistics or our sorted sample data, we relabel it so there's no mistaking. So three common ways are x sub 1 colon n. So that means it's the first or the first smallest out of a sample size n. So this would be the i smallest out of sample size n. This is the nth smallest out of n or the largest. And there's a specific ordering. Another common notation is to put parentheses around a subscript. So x parenthesis 1, that means it's the absolute smallest. So notice that the x1 and x parenthesis 1 are different. This xi, which is the absolute smallest of our sample, that is x parenthesis 1. And then xi, x parenthesis n, that's the largest, which in this case it's the jth, right? It's different with you know, subscripts with and without parentheses. With parentheses, it means they're ordered. And these are our order statistics. Another common is to just relabel them Y, Y1, Y2, YI, or YN. And then these are, of course, ordered. And this is the notation that we're going to use in this video. Now, how many possible orderings of our sample? So we have a sample size of N. Remember, we don't know these values before we collect the data, right? So the, the X1 through Xn could be anything and so there's n factorial ways that these could be sorted right after you know before we collect the data and so this n factorial is somehow going to be a part of the density of these order statistics so the joint pdf of our sorted data so g, g of y1 to you know the yn is n factorial times the product of the marginals with y1 y2 plugged in now with this, of course, this specific ordering, and I'm going to point you to a video. See video for a derivation of this PDF, transformations, colon, uh, derive the joint PDF of order statistics. And there we derive this formula here. So let's go through some examples. So first, consider a random sample size 3 from a distribution with PDF f of x equal to 1 over x squared. x goes from 1 to infinity, 0 otherwise. The CDF can be calculated as this. f of x is 1 minus 1 over x. Now give the joint PDF of the order statistics. Well, g is going to be our joint density of y1, 2, and 3. That's 3 factorial times, oh, this g should be an f. That'll be corrected in the hard copy. So f of y1, f of y2, f of y3. So we plug those values into our density and we get this. And so this is our joint PDF of the order statistics. And remember that there's a specific ordering in our data. Oh, and I should say that x has to be continuous. And so there's the probability that any two values are equal to zero. So you leave them off. Now let's give a PDF of the smallest order statistic. Now, before we do that, let's think about what we're talking about here. If I tell you that I'm going to take a random sample from this PDF, 1 over x squared, 
can you tell me what the smallest value in my sample is going to be? And, and the answer is, of course you can't, because you don't know what it's going to be before I collect it. And if you don't know what it's going to be before I collect it, then it's a random variable. So the smallest order statistic, or the first order statistic, is a random variable. Right? And if it's a random variable, it has a density. And if it has a density, it has a mean, it has a variance, and etc. It has probabilities, a CDF. And that's what we're given here. We're given the PDF of the smallest order statistic when the underlying population is F. And to me, that's just so mind-bogglingly cool that we can even do that. So G of 1. Oh, so if we know the joint PDF to find the the marginal PDF of the first order statistic, we have to integrate out Y2 and Y3. So we take this joint PDF and bring it down. Notice that I've already separated it to make integration easier. So to integrate out Y3, we go from Y2 to infinity. To integrate out Y2, we go from Y1 to infinity. And we do the math. I'm going to skip that just to keep the video at an at a interesting or a good length. This is it. This is the PDF of the first order statistic, the smallest value in our random sample. Now, I'm going to show you a general formula that may not make sense at this point, but it will in a, in a few slides. So notice we want the first order statistic or the smallest. That means there's none, no observation smaller. And there's two observations larger, right? This is the probability of being smaller than Y1. This is the probability of being larger than Y1. And there's two of them. And this is the multinomial coefficient for this. If we were to plug in the Y1 into these values, remember F is this, and, and capital F is this, and little f is this, we would get this equation. Now let's give the PDF the second smallest order statistic, Y2 which is the median in this case, but to find, if we want the margin of Y2, it means we have to integrate out Y3 and we integrate out Y1. So to integrate out Y3, we go from Y2 to infinity. Remember this is our joint density. I just separated it to make integration easier. And then Y1 goes from one to Y2. We do the math and we get this equation right here. This is it and this is the PDF for the second order statistic, in this case, the median. Now, the, to use this general formula, we plug in Y2 to the density. And since it's the second order statistic, it means there's one less than it, so the probability of being less than it, there's actually one greater than it. And, this is the, and then the multinomial coefficient. Notice the exponents, one, one, one. And that's what are here. And three is the sample size. If we were to plug in Y2 to these formula, this formula, we would get this equation. Now, to give, we'll give the PDF of the largest order statistic, that means we have to integrate out Y1 and Y2. So here's the joint PDF. And if we integrate out Y2, it goes from Y1 to Y3. And integrate out y1, then it goes from y1 to y3. We do the math, and I'm going to let you do this. We get this equation right here. And this is the PDF for the largest order statistic, in this case, the third order statistic. And that's just so cool that we have a, a PDF for what we expect the largest value to be, or the third order statistic. Here's the formula that I was talking about. Since it's the third order statistic of a three, we plug it into the density. There's zero above it, and there's two below it. And then this is the multinomial coefficient. Notice the exponents, two, one, zero, two, one, zero. And if we were to plug them into this equation, then we would get exactly this formula. Now, to give the joint PDF the smallest and largest order statistic, that means we just have to integrate out the second or Y2 from the, the joint. And that means we're integrating Y2 from Y1 to Y3 you know, of the joint PDF. We're going to do the math, and this is it. And this is the joint PDF of the first and third order statistic of a sample size of three. Right? The general formula is, since we want the first order statistic, we put it in the PDF. 
and there's zero below the first because that's the smallest. And then we put the third in the PDF, the original PDF, and that means there's one between them. And this is the probability of being between little y3 and little y1. There's one of them. And since this is the largest, there's zero above it. And if we were to plug these in, we get this equation right here. And so to end the video, just I want to state these two theorems and then we'll pick up on a second video. The kth order statistic of a sample size n from the uh, continuous PDF F is this equation right here. And the intuition behind it is if this is the kth order statistic, that means there's k minus 1 smaller than it. And this is the probability being smaller than yk. And there's n minus k larger than the kth order statistic. And this is the probability of being larger than that. And then this is the multinomial coefficient of these exponents, k minus 1, 1, n minus k. And then the joint PDF of the ith and jth order statistics of, from a sample size n, from a uh, continuous PDF f, is this. So, um, so then the joint PDF of the ith and the jth order statistic, yi and yj, is given by this. Now the intuition behind it is this is the ith order statistic, so we put it in the density. That means there's i minus 1 less than it, and that's probably being being less than it. We put in the jth order statistic to the original density. And there's j minus i minus 1 observations between those two, and this is the probability of being between yj and yi. And that means there's n minus j larger than yj, and this is the probability of being larger than yj. And then this is the multinomial coefficients of these exponents. And that's it. Okay, so I'm going to stop here, and we'll do a second video on order statistics. We'll look at the PDF, how to how to derive the PDF for the range, etc. But I want to stop here to keep it at a decent length. So I hope you enjoyed this. I sure did. Please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye.